Hey guys, welcome back to the Man Cave with Big Kev. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is part five of the Emergency Box series. Last series we went over food, and this series we're going to go over fire and heat. So let's get into it. Okay guys, today we're going to go over fire and heat, uh, what you can pack in your kit to either start or stop a fire. So let's start down this end with stopping a fire. So obviously we have a fire extinguisher here. This one here is a dry powder extinguisher. So that uh, dry powder is good for electrical fires. Uh, it's, a, it's a good all rounder. So electrical fluids like oils and stuff like that is uh, a really good option to go for there. You can get these relatively cheap. Uh, you're pretty much right as reins if you're gonna buy a fire extinguisher in Australia because they do have some very strict laws uh, on selling these things. So you know you're gonna get uh, a good unit regardless where you buy it from, in my opinion. Uh, so another item here is the fire blanket. So for obvious reasons, covering up a fire, if someone's clothing catches on fire, you just rip this out and you chuck it on top of them and stop, drop and roll sort of scenario there. Uh, if you're going to have these things here, uh, it's probably a good idea to actually keep these out and somewhere in your kitchen or somewhere that's easily accessible at all times. Uh, but somewhere that you know where it is exactly in the house so you if you do have to evacuate you can just grab it and go it's not one of those things that you want to be fumbling around in boxes for to try and get out you want it out in the open ready to go so there you go there's our fire prevention stuff the uh, more experienced guys if you want to add into what else you can use to, to stop your fires uh, please leave a comment so that is stopping a fire. So keeping warm, creating light, and creating heat. So let's start over this side here, which this belongs over there. Candles. Candles are a very good source of heat in the right conditions. Uh, they can let off a bit of heat. So if you are in a tent or anything like that simply holding a candle can generate enough heat to in the right circumstances to heat up that little confined space so candles are a good idea however i do want to stress that i don't really like these candles here only because the center of gravity is rubbish so you really don't want of course you can melt that and stick it to the table but it can still be knocked over quite easily so I wouldn't recommend these ones here for a cheaper price I would go with tea light candles uh, probably for the same price as you would get some of those like a six pack of these you can get a 12 pack of tea light candles so these here are nice and small they sit low they're very hard to knock over um, but again, with using candles, there's always that risk with an open flame that something could go wrong. So you really have to monitor these at all times. So there we go with candles. Um, I like to use hand warmers as well. They're a, a chemical based hand warmer, they're oxygen activated. So you can get different brands, you can get hot hands, warm hands or whatever they are but they, what they are is just a little bag uh, that you open up as soon as the air hits them you're giving them a shake and it's got different stuff inside them uh, which react to the oxygen and they start to heat up so they give they probably start heating up in the first 10 minutes and then you'll start to feel it sort of come through now they can get quite hot up to like 70 degrees uh, I know that's what the hot hands can get up to so you really do have to be careful with these sorts of things 
uh, di applying these directly to, to skin or on thin clothing. They're really designed for pockets, so they're in thick material and it's going to keep those uh, heat pads off your skin because you can actually get low level burns from things like that. This one here is actually a medica, well, a medical sort of type neck and shoulder tension heater, but it is a larger pad that you could possibly put on the back of your jacket and it would more than likely heat up a little bit more surface area on your body. So just thinking outside the box, these are a really good idea. The hand warmers are absolutely fabulous, especially for cold weather. You really don't want to be fumbling around in your gear with cold, sore hands. It's just not going to be any good for your morale. So those are a really good idea. Now, this bad boy here, um, this is an emergency blanket. And you can see how big this thing is. Now, I got this from a place called TechMed. I'm going to do a full review on this later on but it is an emergency blanket we actually went over that in one of the other videos i can't remember which one it was and actually it was shelter so yeah taping that to the inside of a tarp or something to reflect heat so this one here is the same same it's a reflective sheet except this one is double sided and it's got an od green outer side so yeah and it's a lot thicker as well as you can see but i'll do a full review on that one later on down the track and uh really great company a big lighter you shouldn't really leave home without one this should be an everyday carry for everyone even if you don't smoke they're just a magnificent item to keep on you for starting a fire or uh, just lending to someone to light their durry or whatever it's just there's so many different uses for a big lighter and they're just so reliable so a really good idea there um coming back to the candles actually i got a whole bunch of these and i melted them down some green ones to make some fire cord uh which was uh, what i'll show you in this fire kit actually and it's just got five wicks in there with a whole bunch of melted candles you light one and you let it go actually i'm going to light this middle one here and we'll see if we can keep that going for the duration of the video so there we go uh like i said nice bit of heat there so you can warm your hands up and it's going to give you light so it's a double whammy and you've got five wicks in it so it's gonna give you a lot of burn time so we'll go to a fire kit now just something that you have different options of creating fire so a really good idea is one of these striker rod things a ferro rod uh, this one has a magnesium bar on it as well magnesium burns very well and very hot so Getting some magnesium shavings and a little bit of tinder is going to help you out a great deal. Uh, also, fire rods. This this one here, the, the paper that came with it is just fairly old. But um, the paper had instructions on it and it actually said that you can use this as a signaling device as well. Which is absolutely true. Because you can think about it, when you strike that, that's very bright. And people have been known to use these out at sea and signal for help because they're so bright, like kilometers. So a really good idea for a signaling device and also just for its an intended purpose for uh, the, the fire striker there. And of course you can shave off this hardwood here and use that as tinder as well. So a really good option. Yeah, these are so common these days and so cheap and so versatile so they're a really good item we go into matches now now this is a little waterproof container that came out of um, what is an australian ration pack so 24 hour rat pack and there's some different types 
of things in here of matches so you have these ones here are really awesome like you, windy conditions you know what I'll just test it I'll show you that is going to ensure that you get a fire started in extremely windy conditions and we've also got some normal safety matches there as well and it's got a striker on there um, they're not very good <laughs> so it pays to quite possibly pack a, an extra one off the, the side of a matchbox because these ones really aren't that great so always a good idea to test your gear before you have to use it because there's nothing worse than <laughs> reaching in and grabbing a bit of gear that's just not going to work for you um, this little container also came with cotton wool now cotton wool is extremely flammable and just to show you how extremely flammable it is I have a tin here we set that on there and a fire strike done extremely flammable one little spark from that and it just went up now cotton balls that's all that was what we also have in here a char cotton ball so I'll get over that uh, over to that in a minute but cotton balls as you can see are very flammable a really good way to make fire starters is just Vaseline and a cotton ball you soak it in Vaseline and then you can put it in a little Ziploc bag or somewhere away from your other stuff there just for mess purposes so your Vaseline doesn't get everywhere but in doing that you're coating it and it's going to prolong the burn time of that cotton ball and you can actually get about 30 to 30 seconds to a minute or even a little bit longer out of your cotton ball so that's a really really easy cheap way of making fire starters um, all you have to do is to break them open a little bit and expose some of those fibers and it, they just go up so this is a cotton ball as well now this is called char cloth so the idea of char cloth is you put 100% cotton material in your tin you close it up it's got a little hole in the top close that up and put it on the flame and a little flame will pop out that hole and what happens is it'll burn the gases it'll turn it'll, it'll heat that material up and burn the gases out and what you're left with after that flame goes out is char cloth so this is a cotton ball that I did and again getting that started I'll do it on the table there you go there we go that's lit put that in a bird's nest make uh, get some scraggly material um, plant base very easy to light up don't burn the Bundy bar Kevin and then you can feed that with oxygen and essentially get that bird nest to light up so practicing your technique is also a really good idea as well now these ones here are what I have in here so all that is is 100% cotton rope this is about 8 mil all you, all you have to do is melt some wax down soak the rope in the wax pull it out and you got yourself a fire snake and then you just cut it up into little nuggets and when it comes time to burn them 
you just expose these fibers. Now I don't believe a, a fire rod would work with this. I might actually try and give it a go. Let's see if we can get that going. I don't think so because I think the wax has coated it a bit too much. It just doesn't have enough to burn through that wax. Hey, we're learning together. <laughs> no, that's not going to catch. But as you see, that's lit up and it's still going. So that will burn for a couple of minutes. So just another option there, I've just cut them up into little nuggets there and kept them in there. So that's pretty much all I have to show you for this episode, guys. So we've, we've got some stuff there to stop a fire. We've got stuff there for heat and light. Uh, you've got keeping warm, keeping warm, and your fire starting materials. So there you go. Anyone that's more experienced than I am, please don't hesitate to comment so you can share your expertise or your skills with the rest of the, um, with the, rest of the viewers. Uh, thank you very much for joining me on this episode. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook and Instagram as well. And I hope to see you on the next video. So thank you. See you later.